Okay. Good morning. Uh, my name is Gary Brown. I am the fire chief of the city of Hayes, and I am here today to recap for everyone um, a little bit about what the fire department did in 2015. And most people um, really don't think about the fire department a lot until they need them. <laughs> but quite frankly, the fire department's a two and a half million dollar enterprise that the city provides to protect our community. Uh, you know, the cost of the fire department is two and a half million dollars, but there's also the cost of fire insurance and those related costs that people, people experience. We continue to have our, uh, our community has a public fire protection classification rating of class three. And that means that we have a very good risk um, uh, to protection ratio with the insurance industry, which helps people in our community get uh, better insurance rates. As a matter of fact, in the United States, our fire department is, our community is rated in the top 9% of communities uh, in the United States that are rated by the insurance industry for fire risk. We're in the top 5% for communities in Kansas. Now this is a, an evaluation of the fire department, our 911 dispatching system, and our water supply, but it translates into better fire insurance rates for people in our community. The fire department uh, uh, has uh, uh, staffing adequate to maintain five firefighters on duty every day at the Main Street Fire Station. Um, we uh, also staff one firefighter at the airport fire station during the, the hours of air passenger operations. That's to meet uh, FAA requirements for uh, safety at our airport. The firefighters uh, also uh, are required to live within our city or the Three Mile Planning District in order for them to be available for recall. And when we have serious emergencies, we recall all our off-duty firefighters in order to have enough firefighters to safely operate for major emergencies in the city. Training is a, a, a big part of what the fire department does. Um, obviously, the, the regulations that affect the fire department are established in our code of ordinances. That's the mission authority and fire safety regulations that, for the community. We have to follow FAA regulations and we also have to follow OSHA and NFPA best practices uh, gu uh, guidance. Our training uh, is nationally certified through the University of Kansas Fire and Rescue Training Institute and we have a comprehensive training program that our firefighters go through. Our uh, volunteer firefighters go through, uh, are required to be certified in basic firefighter skills, knowledge and abilities, as well as emergency medical technician. Our career firefighters go through a three-year course of study in both basic and advanced firefighter, airport firefighter, driver operator, hazardous materials operations, emergency medical technician, and uh, rescue operations. So it's a, a pretty comprehensive program. Lieutenants uh, get into more advanced work as fire inspectors, fire instructors, and also uh, they certify to be basic fire officers. Our fire captains uh, are required to be advanced fire officers and also to complete the uh, um, certified public manager program that, that is active in the state of Kansas uh, through, uh, uh, and they also go to the University of Maryland Staff and Command School as part of their course of study. We average about three hours of training for each fire, or for firefighters each day, and in 20, 2015, we had 8,000 hours of training. And our job is really to be prepared, and we have to be prepared in a wide range of things as a full service fire department. So that means we are constantly training. As far as calls for service, this year we had 2,251 uh, emergency and urgent calls for service. That's pretty consistent with nationwide benchmarks for what a fire department should do. Uh, generally, you see about 100 calls per thousand population. We have a population of about 21,500, so that's a little bit more than the average. Uh, nationwide, about 70 to 80 percent of all calls that fire departments respond to are EMS rescue calls. And that's no different than us. We're about 80% of the calls we respond to are EMS or rescue calls. And that compares, uh, in, in Kansas, the state fire marshal publishes statistics from reports that Kansas fire departments file. Um, 
basically uh, 63 percent of the calls that Kansas fire departments go to are based on, are for rescue and EMS emergencies. Uh, some fire departments in Kansas don't respond to EMS emergencies like the City of Hayes Fire Department does. We have a very good partnership with Ellis County EMS where we support them. Um, so that, uh, uh, that's an important service that we provide to the community. Um, so 2,251 calls compared to 2,082 last year. Uh, 19, just a little over 19,000 the year before. So our call numbers keep increasing. Now our, pol our, our population is increasing, but a lot of that is there's increasing numbers of people that get automatic fire alarms in their homes and their businesses, and that's a lot of what we do, but also medical alarms. Uh, you know, as the baby boomer generation gets older, uh, people are dialing 911 more for medical problems related to that. The uh, um, fire department uh, responds to, our goal is to respond to 90% of all of our calls for service within nine minutes of the time the person dials 911. In other words, a, a person dials 911 within nine minutes, 90% of the time, we have uh, the first fire trucks arriving on the scene. Um, we have, uh, that's been our goal for a number of years and we have met that goal uh, this year. As a matter of fact, our stats were actually 94% within nine minutes, 90% of the time. So, um, we also operate the regional rescue team uh, through a grant from our Homeland Security Council for Northwest Kansas. We have a FEMA type two building collapse rescue team that the fire department provides for like a tornado strike or other emergency in Northwest Kansas. We, we provide that service. For fire code enforcement, uh, this year we inspected 807, or we conducted 879 inspections of existing buildings, and that was in just a little bit over 500 buildings in the city were inspected by our fire inspectors this year. We don't have full-time fire inspectors. The captains and lieutenants do that as part of their regular uh, duties. We also conducted 140 pre-emergency plans or revised, actually updated, uh, 140 pre-emergency plans for major buildings in our city. We have about 800 pre-plans that we uh, keep in our command truck. Uh, usually we try to do about 300 uh, pre-plans a year. This year was down. We had some turnover where we had to do a lot of basic training for some new, uh, new members, so that cut down the numbers of pre-emergency plans that we could complete this year. We also inspected uh, 1,015 fire hydrants. Uh, there's about a thousand fire hydrants on the city water system. We um, inspect the hydrants, make sure they're working properly, test their flows because we want to know how much water we can get from a particular fire hydrant. We color code the fire hydrants to tell us what flows are available from the hydrants. And uh, we also, in partnership with the utilities department at the same time, flush the water system for the purpose of improved water quality. We try to time our, actually the utilities department times their burnouts of the water system to when we're going to go out and do hydrants. And we usually do the hydrant inspections right after the freezing weather quits. We start in March. Uh, we try to get done before the summertime and the heat comes and the water restrictions. But uh, that's usually when we flush the hydrants and uh, test them and make sure that uh, everything is working properly especially with freeze damage over the winter to fire hydrants. We want to catch that and get it fixed before something happens. So at the airport fire station, again, we have one firefighter on duty there about four times a day. So it's only staffed part time and it's staffed during the hours when the uh, uh, passenger airliner uh, comes into the city or leaves uh, or if a special charter flight came in that had passenger service, uh, we would also staff the airport fire station for that. But when there's an airport emergency, uh, that firefighter responds as well as the firefighters from the Main Street Station and the Rural Fire Department assist us as well um, to, to uh, provide that service. So we're out there virtually every day during the times the flight comes in and, and leaves. So, But uh, again, uh, our budget is about two and a half million dollars and it's important that the people of the community know what they get for that money. Um, the fire department, quite frankly, for a community of our size, is, uh, uh, does pretty much everything a full-service fire department should do for a community of our size.